What's up, guys? Welcome to today's episode. Today, we will be discussing do law school rankings matter? A very controversial subject between law students. It's going to be a good one. Three, two, one, let's go. Welcome to Don't Mind the Golden Handcuffs Podcast or DMGH Podcast. A place for future and present attorneys or any young professional to find the motivation they need to further their minds, careers, and financial success. It's hard to make it out there when you came from nothing. We want to provide you with some help with that. Of course, a one-person team couldn't accomplish this. DMGH Podcast experienced guests will guide us on this road to career and financial success. First, let's take this law thing one step at a time with your host chris what's up guys welcome to today's episode as i said today's episode is regarding do law school rankings matter um safe to say this is definitely just our opinions we could be wrong we this is just our immediate opinions and today we have with us uh, pratik thanks for having me chris thanks for being here so might as well get started right yeah let's do this this is a rocky road (laughs) it's gonna be (laughs) but we're gonna offend someone whether oh, it's a kid from Harvard or it's going to be the kid at a school ranked. I don't uh, know. 100%. We're going to offend someone. So why don't we get started? <laughs> Let's do it. Pratik, do you think law school rankings matter? I'm going to give you the generic law school answer. It depends. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say from my experience, if you want to do big law, and for those that don't know, it's you know one of the bigger firms in the country, um, I would say rankings do matter, right? I think if you're in the top 14 or what they call T14 schools, those doors are open a lot faster. Right. So if you're going to a Columbia or a Harvard or a Yale, your doors are open to whatever market you want to go into mm-hmm. just because it's prestigious of school. The further down you go, the rankings, obviously big law or whatever it is, the rankings may matter to an extent, but probably not fully. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't think if you're 70 versus 60 or 70 versus 50, ultimately is going to make a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Like I can't remember any time I've gone to an interview where someone's been like, oh, you're from X school and this person's from Y school. The only time it matters is when they're comparing Columbia or Yale to an xyz school so i think in that way it really depends on what you want to get out of law school what you want to do and i think that's when the rankings are going to matter Mm -hmm. so do you think it matters between schools in the t14 ranking if you're a six versus nine i don't think so i think all the schools are so prestigious they give you so many opportunities just the name of the school itself i feel like will give you the opportunities like i don't know if go i think yale or harvard i think the rankings are coming out again so i don't know what's the 14th you said uh march 12th i think okay um, but again, it's typically Yale, Harvard or whatever is going to be on top. And I think choosing between that or like a Columbia, I really don't know how much of a difference it's really going to make. Yeah. Uh, do you think, so But it does affect in terms of jobs possibly if you want to go to corporate law, right? I think just in general, big law, right? Like if you're trying to go to something like, you know, Cravath or some big, you know, shoe, white shoe law firm, like it's going to be a ranking thing. If most of these, some of these firms don't even recruit outside of the T14. Yeah. So if you're looking to go to these big firms, if you don't have the contacts, it's going to be your school name. Yeah. Um, once you leave that, I mean, I don't know how much of a difference, you know, schools are going to matter. I think it comes down to, I think if you're not in the T14, um, you need to prove yourself more compared. I remember I had an internship. It was, it was pretty, um, prestigious and I had a person work with me that went to Columbia and this person's grades were really poor, but because they went, came from Columbia, they were able to acquire the internship. So I think if you come from a poorer ranked school, your burden of proof of proving yourself is much higher than if you were going to Columbia or, right. or Harvard or something. Your school name's not supporting anymore, right? Like yeah. it's going to be when you go to a state school or whatever, you're yeah. going to have to go out there and show them that you're the best of the best at your school even. Like yeah. that's where your GPA, GPA starts to matter. Like if you're not in the top 10% of your class and you're competing with someone from Yale, what grounding do you have to say? Like I'm going to be better than this person. Yeah. And does it matter in law school in terms of internships or you think it only applies to like post-grad? No, I think even internships, right? Like there's going to be a lot of competitive programs out there that, you know, look at school name and ranking and what you can bring to the team. And so I think universally, I think the name unfortunately makes a difference. Yeah. Because um, there's going to be so many bright students that just couldn't afford it or didn't, you know, the LSATs didn't go the way they wanted them to and end up going to lower ranked schools. But because of their school name or title, they might be kind of precluded from applying yeah. to a lot of things. It might matter in terms of what law you're trying to pursue right if you're trying to go corporate law then rankings matter more if you're trying to let's say be a family lawyer it may not matter as much like do you want to go into hundreds of thousand dollars of debt if in harvard if you're gonna end up uh your passions let's say like like criminal defense right. or something like that i mean for sure i mean what you want to do with your legal degree is going to make a huge difference like if public interest is what you want to do do you really want to go to a t14 and take all this debt on yeah i'm not saying they don't have great programs i'm sure they do 
But typically, you know, the reputation the T14s have is you're going to a big law firm. Yeah. Then you, two, three, four, five years down the line, you do what yeah. you want. But typically, that's where the students go. Yeah. And so taking on $70,000, sixty, fifty thousand dollars a day a year times three hundred fifty plus, like it's a lot of debt to take on for a public service job. Yeah. And so in terms of rankings, when you're choosing your school, you know, you have to think about what you want. I mean, you might not know the answer, so never close the door. So yeah, I tell, it's so hard to know. Yeah, I tell people all the time, like when you're deciding between schools and looking at rankings, make sure you think that there's you might not get into some school and then later on think like, hey, I do want to do big law. Yeah. And then might go into a smaller school. You may you're have stuck between a rock and a hard place. Right. I think that uh so I would say that's safe to say that if you go to let's say T14 and you get a A minus or A uh, average and you go to let's say a um some school ranked 50 to 100 and you get an A and A minus you're not really competing with that T14 no. that got that grade when you when you do really well in a um uh, not T14 T14 school you're not competing more with like the mid to bottom class of a T14 a lot of times I feel like I would say that's a fair accurate representation of it yeah. I think it's just you know the name itself like we, we might be learning the same thing and we probably are your first year you are learning the same thing yeah but for someone to say i came from harvard and have or yale whatever and have yeah. a b even versus someone say i graduated from i don't know like penn state law school let's say and has an a a is still the weight of the school the impression it has on people already is like well i go to columbia or i go to yale yeah it's a rigorous program yeah even though you might be learning the same exact yeah. thing so it's something that you should have to face the reality of yeah i definitely so to correct myself, it's, I don't think you're only competing with kids that are getting in the, that are meeting the curve or under. But I think uh, I do believe that your burden of proof of proving yourself is much higher when oh, you come yeah. from a non T14 school. Of course. But uh, I do agree where if you're looking at rankings, let's say 50 to 100 or 30 to 100, I don't think there's really that much of a difference depending. I, I think the, the difference comes in the alumni base. You know, yeah. if, if one school is ranked like 60 but has a huge alumni network that'll be more useful than the school ranked 75 that is doesn't have it so i think that's not that's not also rankings right that's more of alumni well yeah then you're looking at other factors right you're gonna start looking into alumni records and you're gonna be looking into employment rates and bar yeah. passage like all the other things that you should be looking at when picking a school especially when you don't have the t14s as a feasibility right yeah like i know for me when i was looking at schools and i wasn't able to get into a t14 I, that's a lot of things I looked at. Like, you know, rankings then eventually fell off like the top of my list of what I was considering. Yeah. Because choosing a school that's, you know, 30 or 50 or 60, like your opportunities are about the same. They're really not yeah. going to change much, you know. A yeah. state school is going to be no just as much as another small school. Like it's not yeah. really going to make a difference, in my yeah. opinion, at least. No, yeah. Uh, my experience was slightly different. I got into one T14, but with no scholarships. Right. And I wasn't about to take on three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars in debt to get a law degree. For me, it happened to work out because I worked really hard in law school and were able to yeah. get corporate jobs. But that's not necessarily a, a, a something a person should rely on for deciding. It's also knowing that there's no certainty, right? Like you could take on the three hundred thousand dollars in debt, and we're hoping you know these big schools would guarantee you a job. But that's not true. You can go yeah. into the market and not get that hundred eighty thousand, hundred ninety thousand dollars salary. Yeah. Now you took on three hundred thousand dollars of debt, and now you're stuck in that field. Because yeah. for you to to tell the firm I'm leaving, how are you going to pay down that student debt you incurred? It's tough, right? Like when you're doing public sector and like you're not getting paid as much, and if that's what you even want to do, like you might have the passion to do public sector, but you're going to think twice when someone says, "Oh, by the way, congratulations, you graduated law school, but yeah. here's three hundred thousand dollars in debt with like eight percent interest." Like you're going to think twice. Um, have you been through experience where someone questioned your school due to the rankings or I mean people ask all the time right like when I was talking to mentors or whoever in the field they'll be like you know when you're going to these interviews like how are you telling people that you're going to be better than the kid coming from Harvard or Yale or Stanford yeah and it's a tough question to answer right because there's no right answer to it yeah. it's just saying that you're going to be ready to work hard and show that you're worth the you know time investment they're going to make in you but it happens people will ask and if it's not for a job, it's going to be someone out on the street mm -hmm. or even sometimes clientele, right? Like I know I've, like my parents have gone to attorneys and be like, look on the wall and they see like, oh, some state school versus a kid next door that has a Harvard degree on the wall. They're going to think twice. Yeah. It's just the impression people have of school names. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because I feel like there's going to be kids at a state school that are just as brilliant, if not more brilliant than kids at Harvard. Yeah. But that's just the reality of how the system works. And how do you feel about transferring to a T14 coming from a non-T14? I would say, I mean, I don't have experience in it, but I would say it's going to be difficult, right? Because typically transfers in law school in general are very limited. And some schools will take maybe one or two people. So the transfer rate is very, very low. Mm -hmm. And so if you can do it and your goal is to go to big law, do it. I would say, you know, you could, you could reap the benefits, yeah. right? Applying to big law firms from state schools or smaller yeah. schools the opportunities are a lot smaller. Yeah. The second you transfer and say, oh, I left from here, went to, I don't know, Yale or Columbia, like it's automatically going to put you on a new level of opportunities. Yeah. 
Um, but there's obviously caveats to transferring that. I mean, I don't know if you're talking about it in another episode, but there's challenges that come when you're considering. Yeah. Which transfers. might even out the the transfer as well. The benefits. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that if you transfer, you can't get on journal. Yeah, I mean, it's, sometimes it's the journal disadvantage. Sometimes it's or the law only, review or OCI even right. Cause, OCI because when you apply, you're going to be the end of your one L trying right. to get in, which you're not going to know till later in the cycle. Yeah, and you won't be able to OCI at that school. Yes, I would do the research because if you can't get on journal or, or law review, you're, that means you're not getting your note published. At least unless unless you go kind of you apply yeah, to get outside of the law school. Uh, you oh yeah, I've heard that you lose you can't get scholarship money. I also heard you can't get ranked. So if your school does do ranking, so if you, so if you, so you can't get ranked, I've heard something about scholarship money. I'm where sure. if that is applicable, then that's something to consider as well. Yeah, because then again, you're going there without. You scholarship. gotta look into the school's policies. Like, yeah. I mean, we don't know yeah. them because so we didn't do it. Yeah, but. it depends on the school, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah we didn't do it, but if these are, uh, I've heard these around around yeah. the school. Uh, I've friend certain associates that um, transferred, um, but these are negatives, and they're 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 really there. It's something to think of about. You get like a pro and con to everything, right? You go to the big school. If you transfer, you you might get the job that you wanted because yeah. you went to a big school, but yeah. you might not, you know, you're not going to get in your note published. You're it's not also get... important to make sure you're not a uh, a big fish in a small pond going to be a small fish in a big pond because if you end up transferring to, let's say, Yale or something like that, and you're just not used to that intensity, yeah. then you're now going to be in the bottom of the class compared to if you went to, let's say, another school ranked above 50 and you did you know, phenomenal. I mean, I tell people all the time, you have to find where you're comfortable above everything else when deciding on a law school or whatever in life in general, find what you're comfortable in. Cause if you go to the school and you're going to not enjoy your time, they're not be able to learn, not thrive. You're automatically putting yourself at a disadvantage, right? Yeah. You go to a school where you feel comfortable and you think you can thrive. And that gap between T14 and what school you went to might disappear. I mean, we both were fortunate enough to be going to firms that yeah. we wanted to go to, but that wouldn't have been feasible unless we worked as hard as we did at our school. Yeah. A lot of luck came to play. Of course, hard work. Of course, yeah. We went to events. We did a lot of things that a lot of people didn't do, but right. a luck is definitely a piece of the puzzle of in course. terms of that. Uh, do you ever kind of, do you think that the difference in rankings matter in terms of like 50 to 100 versus 100, 150? Like, do you think there's no difference at all after the T14 scale or, or do you think there are gradations? I mean... I'm going to say something controversial here. I don't think it's going to matter ultimately, right? The reason mm -hmm. being is once you've lost the T14 or top 50 schools, I don't know how much employees are going to look at the school and be like, I've never heard of this, right? Because mm -hmm. no matter where you go from one part of the country to another, there's going to be some schools people never even heard of. Yeah. Um, for that reason, like, I don't know if it's going to matter ultimately. I do think if the employer's heavy on ranking and you're trying to go to big law, like the further up you are, the better. But again, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference, to be honest. So you think that if you were looking at resumes and you saw a law school you never heard of and it's like 140 or something like that, you would look at it the same as getting a, a school ranking at like 60 or 70 of an institution that like you've heard their names multiple times? I would say possibly, right? Like, I, I think the big thing is like what you have to look at what region you're in, right? Like, for yeah. example, if you're in the New York area and I'm trying to think of a random school, let's say Hofstra pops up on your list, right? There's a New York based school, but not one of the T14s versus you know some random school in the midwest like if i've never heard of the school for sure it's gonna be something that i flag and have to look up yeah but if i've never heard of either or school ranking's not gonna oh matter. yeah if it's two yeah. two schools you never heard of then it's not gonna yeah. make a big difference like, but usually it's not like that usually it's like a bunch of schools you do know which is possible with, uh, one random throwaway that you don't really know but there's sometimes schools that like no one's even heard of, or they've heard of but they're not as popular right yeah. like Hofstra or where, you know, like things like if you think of New York schools, you're not gonna be like, oh, Hofstra's you're one of those. You think of Columbia and NYU. Right. Yeah. Same thing. Like, you know, if they go that that person applies to a position in California, they're gonna be like, wait, where are you yeah. located? And like, I think so indirectly the ranking might matter in a sense because if you want to work in New York, then you're stuck to like those schools, right? In the course. New York area or at least New Jersey, maybe the bordering states. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to some random school in the Midwest and let's say it's ranked like hundred and thirty and you're applying to jobs in New York yeah. It's going to be a little difficult because not only did you not go to school in the area, but now you're going to school they never heard of. Right. I mean, it matters, right? Name reputation is going to matter no matter what you do. But the challenge is if you're going to be paying, let's say, you know, 40, mm -hmm. 50 grand at a 50 mm -hmm. ranked school or you're paying like 12 grand at a 100 ranked school. Yeah. Yeah. Is it really worth the extra amount of money? So you think that looking back, if you were offered before applying to law school, if you're offered, let's say, a, a full ride from a school that's like 120 uh, ranked uh, or a uh, no scholarship for a school that's like let's say ranked like 40 would you not 
care about the difference and go to the one with the full scholarship? Well, I think if you break the top 50, I think I'd consider going to the other ones. If, thing, so, if the school is, like, to say, 60 or 70. I'll give you 51. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I, look, I said, it depends on the market, right? If you're naming school 120, that's in the New York market. If the school that's ranked 50 is in Iowa, let's say. The challenge is, like, how do I transfer that to back to New York, right? Typically, I've, my mentors have said, where you go to law school is typically where you practice. Yeah. Obviously, there's rare circumstances like yourself who's leaving this area to go to D.C. or whatever. Um, the challenge here becomes, well, you know, if I'm in Iowa, like, how do I tell someone here, yeah, this is a real school, like this, you yeah. know, how do you transfer that skill? It's tough. But at the same time, if I can say I'm in the New York market, New York firms are recruiting from my school, it might be worth going to a rank, lower rank school. Yeah. It, it all depends on what you want to get out of your experience and what your ultimate goals are. And that's tough to answer, right, before you pick a yeah, school. it is. Um, I know we know a lot of people that said, I'm going to do X, and then a year later now are doing Y. Oh, of course. Um, yeah. So I tell people don't close it off just because of X, Y, Z amount. Like, obviously, monetary concerns or something, um, school rankings, location, family obligations, whatever. There's other factors you have to consider. Rankings, I think, play a role, but I don't think it should be the thing that's on the top of your list. Mm-hmm. It's finding that school that's going to be putting you in the best place you could possibly be in to succeed at what you want to do. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's like a perfect summary. Yeah, that's, that's literally all you can do. There's no other way around it. So I'm going to go back and edit a whole conversation just, just leave that, that 30 yeah, yeah, seconds. Of course. That's all that matters. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, to anyone out there listening, if you're going through the application process, take that into consideration. You know, like I look at rankings to see kind of how you feel about it. Make sure it's the right choice for you. Uh, like I said, I, I could have went to a, um, a T14 side not to because no, to me, nothing is worth going half a million dollars in debt. Yeah. Because, because there's no guarantee. Yeah, because even if let's say you get what you want and you and you get that big corporate job, you're still going to be a a servant to your law firm because you're going to always think in the back of your head, I can't quit. The second you say I can't quit, that thing becomes not enjoyable. Enjoyable. You're in debt. You're in debt yeah. over three hundred thousand dollars. Like, yeah. how do you just overcome that? Yeah. You know. And that's like not including undergraduate or anything loans else. Yeah. Or anything else. If you're doing housing. If you're doing something yeah. else, like interest that accrues while you're in yeah. school like but again that's a personal decision if yeah, you're whole fa- if, if you want to make your parents a super proud and to you that's worth that 300 grand than saying yeah. yes to harvard to make the decision it's a great institution the t14s are t14s for a reason no of matter course. what whatever school tells you like yeah. they're there yeah. for a reason um so you need to look at that and decide yourself i mean i don't know how much you would pay to have a harvard sweatshirt but i know that that could be worth a lot to someone just having to be able to say that um, I have a good friend from Brazil. He got into Harvard for for um for undergrad, and mm-hmm. his mom, his parents. That's all they talk about. And to me, like that's you can't even pay for that type of of course um value. But that's just my thing, right? Like I tell people all the time, it's a subjective choice, right? Like no one's gonna tell you what to do. Yeah. And there's no perfect answer, right? Yeah. Ever someone will tell you go to the best school you can get into. Maybe that's true. Yeah. You pick a school that you can succeed in. Maybe that's better off. Yeah. Or you know, like you said, maybe your parents really want you to go somewhere. The joy you get to see on their face. Maybe that yeah. that's what matters to you. It's really subjective. Yeah. What I would say as a rule of thumb, that's like mine, obviously, uh, I would say get the average of the ranking and how much you have to pay. You yeah. know, like if you are getting um, half scholarship for a school ranked 50 versus a full scholarship at 101, then like look at the value you're getting. Right. So maybe yeah. it is worth going for the one that's 50 for if you're only paying like. 10,000 or 20,000 dollars a year versus a full ride or something else. Uh, just try to, it's hard to put numbers on these things of or, or have like a, no. a, a gauge, but I would try to find the average, like find what is okay for you. Right. You know, and there's other factors too, right? Look at the bar passage rate, look at their employment rate, look at how much their people are getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. All those things matter ultimately. Like when choosing between 50 or 100, and that's kind of what I was saying before is pick what, look, do the research. Yeah. Right. As lawyers, that's what you do, that's what you're going to do now. Look yeah. up the school information. If they say, Oh, we're ranked 50, but they have 20% unemployment rate. That's something you have to consider. Yeah. Like, that's a little scary. Yeah. If they can't get their students passing the bar, that means you're not prepping the students well enough. Yeah. So there's a lot of other factors to consider uh, before picking your school. And especially if rankings now off the table or if you're not considering as much, there's other factors to consider. Yeah, definitely. So rankings can be important depending on what you want to get out of it. Absolutely. But it's not the end all be all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in terms of picking between schools, um, just try to create a value system where you kind of gauge what's important to you and then average it out. You know, if not paying for school is really important, then that's something to look at. If you're looking at some sort of, um, uh, some sort of, what's it called? You know, um, fanciness you're trying to no. acquire being a lawyer, no, which, which is not, a, should not be a reason to go to law school. Uh, then you got to consider that as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That's pretty concise. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Quick it to the point. Yeah, sounds awesome. Is there anything else you would like to tell the audience, some advice or anything like that regarding this process? Or you... I mean, I don't know if you're going to talk about another you know, podcaster later on, but there's factors to consider when applying to law school or picking a law school, actually. 
Um, but the, there's many out there. Make sure you do your research. That's the big one. Because I feel like a lot of people pick law school without knowing what they're getting themselves into. Yeah, agreed. So do your research. Agreed. So it's a good thing we're here, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So guys, keep listening. We're going to keep releasing content that we think is helpful. We might even revisit certain topics like how to get into law school or or should to go to law school as uh, the audience base grows. Uh, yeah. Thank you as always for listening. Uh, me and Pratik hope that we helped at least one of you. If we helped one, then there that's go. good enough for us, right? Yep. All right. We're clocking out. Talk to you guys later. Pratik, as always, thanks for coming thanks on. Thanks for having me. Awesome. See you guys.